on YouTube. Welcome to the Eugene Torto YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, please go down there and subscribe. Hit the thumbs up button. Leave comments. Hit the notification bell. And you get to see more of my videos. However, if you just want to watch and don't subscribe, that's fine too. Uh, majority of people that watch YouTube channels, and this just ain't with my channel, is uh, they don't subscribe. I don't know what the reason is for that. They either don't want to be bothered subscribing or they want to register with YouTube. I don't know, but that's up to you. It's free country. Anyway, get back to what today's video is about. Is going to be an emulator. Ostrich 2. Moats. Net Ostrich 2. I will leave links down there in the comment section uh, where to get it and basically what this does it allows you to make real-time changes uh, while your engine is running like, say you want to change your uh, air fuel ratio you can just go ahead and use this uh, while it's running uh, Instead of having to take the chip out, burn a new chip, put it back in, data log, stop, do it over again, and uh, this this uh, enables you not to do it. Now I know there are people that just uh, run these all the time. Uh, that's probably fine if your ECM is inside the car. These things are not waterproof. So if you have like a 90 or a 91 Corvette like mine where the uh, ECM is located under the hood and it's exposed to heat and uh, weather and vibration, that's probably not a good idea. Also on a 90, like on my 90 Corvette, I have a, it seems like I have uh, issues with this and it has to do with the uh, EMI, uh, with, I guess something to do with the uh, ECM being under the hood, you have... Uh, electromagnetic interference problems and this will cause problems so you want to run shortest cable possible because that will help eliminate I know some people wrap these in aluminum maybe I'll try that next time I use it uh, but uh, get on with it well uh, basically this is the ostrich 2 it comes with the cable and it comes with a USB cable that you plug into your whatever device you're using to uh, emulate with I am going to be using this with Tuner Pro to get started. I'm just going to go over briefly how uh, to get started. You're going to want to plug this into your computer. And I'm just going to use my home PC for this demonstration. Let's see if I can get the cable in there right. I guess I can. Let's see here. There we go. It's in. And I'm going to launch Tuner Pro. And then from here over, I'm going to switch to the uh, screen recorder on my PC. That's why I'm using my computer. I usually, when I emulate out in the car, I use my little netbook here. Uh, or notebook, whatever you want to refer to these things. And, because uh, it's portable. But uh, for uh, these purposes, I'll uh, switch over to the screen recorder. Okay, I'm using screen recorder. Tuner Pro is open. The Osher is hooked up. And the well, first thing you want to do is make sure the ostrich is uh, initialized the emulation hardware. So you want to initiate the uh, ostrich. Go up here where this arrow is. Click. <laughs> Hear that beep. And you're connected. And another thing you want to do is upload your bin. So we'll open a bin. I'm going to use the one I already have open, which is ANHU. That is a factory bin file from the 90 Corvette Automatic 259 Gears L98. Okay, I'm going to do that. And we're going to upload that bin, current bin, to the emulator. And there she goes. And we're come over here, enable, disable emulation. It's enabled. We're going to start by making a, say, a change to the volumetric table. That's what you use to, uh, we'll do the uh, lower table. This will 
enable us to uh, either rich in or lean out the mixture. Um, this is best done with a wide band while you're doing this live because this will be, be you'll be doing this while the engine is running. And uh, you don't have to do it while the engine's running, but uh, it's best to have it running and best to have a wide band up. Uh, when I go out to the car, I'll demonstrate that to you. Hopefully, you'll be able to, this camera will be able to record the wide band. So, let's say I want to make a uh, richen up the mixture in, say, the 700 RPM range. I'll just go ahead across the board. You can do individual cells, and that's usually what you do. Or, in this case, for example, I'm just going to do the entire, the entire uh, RPM range. And uh, I'm going to increase it uh, a whole bunch by 10. You can watch the uh, little graph down there. There it goes. That's quite a bit. And then I'm going to save it to the emulator. There we go. Now I'm going to change it back. Same thing. Execute and up to load it to the emulator. There it goes. If you have your wide band hooked up and uh, you're in that RPM range, you'll see it richen up and you'll see it uh, lean out if you lean it out. Uh, uh, same with the other settings, timing and other things. I believe there's some things on here you can't do with the engine running I'm not really sure it might vary according to your application also so uh, something to consider uh, here we have the factory timing curve this is what a factory timing curve uh, graph looks like for an L98 uh, you can see when some areas they have the timing like say 2000 RPM and map reading of 30 it'll be at 48 degrees then let's say you go up to 4,800 RPM and you're under load. Say you're at uh, going wide open throttle. You're at uh, the map reading at 95 to 100. That's where you would be when you're under load. Uh, somewhere in that area. And you can see it uh, drops down to 2391 for the timing. Uh, obviously, if you modify your timing it's going to be different depending on your application uh, for now we'll uh, change this one right here we'll just increase it to 35 and and we'll save it or upload it to the emulator and there she goes you can see her in a bar graph where it went up and then we'll change it back to what it was she goes back down to where she was and uh, you do this real time while the engine's running uh, if you're going to be uh, you can data log and run the ostrich at the same time and uh, probably the best way to do that is have someone drive the car for you while you make the changes obviously because uh, I mean if you're just idling like what I'm going to be doing here in a little bit I'll show you shortly you just uh, let it idle and uh, you can do those changes like you're just making changes to the idle. So, uh, I'll throw you, show you a few more things and then I'll go out to the car and I'll demonstrate that changes to you. Uh, one thing I should note is the Oshish 2 is very sensitive to uh, the bin files. Uh, I've gotten, uh, when I first, before I started to. Uh, learn to uh, burn my own chips and make my own changes I used a mail order tune and none of those mail order tunes would work with the ostrich 2 they were I guess they're corrupt or it just doesn't like them I don't know what it is uh, if someone wants to chime in why but uh, these are tunes that I got mail uh, emailed to me so they weren't any good and uh, other Factory tunes that I've downloaded off the internet, sock factory tunes, wouldn't work in a simulator either. The only tune I've been able to get to work, bin file, is the stock bin file that I took directly off the memcal, and I'm running, which is what I'm showing you here, and that's the one we'll use out there. Uh, one other thing is uh, 
to completely erase the uh, ostrich too. There's a uh, utility for that, and you can't run that while Tuner Pro is open. So I'll close Tuner Pro out and see if I can find it. See, where is that demon? Ostrich reset. There it is. Okay, this is the demon ostrich reset. If it doesn't automatically detect it, I think you have to set all these. You'll have to do your own research on that. But basically, you just open that up. Like I said, it won't work with the uh, Tuner Pro working. So, and reset. And that basically, as far as I know, that completely. Uh, erases uh, any uh, bin files you have in the ostrich though so, when it comes to uh, doing any of this stuff make sure you do your research we'll uh, go I'll get out there to the car and hopefully everything will work uh, and I'll go over a few other things there when we get out there okay I am out in the garage and I'm gonna hook up the emulator the ostrich 2 and depending, of course, it'll vary which adapter you need and what, you know, what car. Will, everything will vary depending on your application. I mean, if you got a Ford, you're going to need a different uh, adapter and your ECM is going to be located in a different way. Either way, no matter what your application, Honda, Ford, Chevy, whatever make, uh, that the emulator can be used with, you're going to want to disconnect your power before you remove your chip and hook up your emulator. Uh, that pretty much should be standard with all ECMs that I am aware of. In the case of my 90, I can just, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, there's a power lead. You don't have to disconnect the battery, you just connect the, the power lead to the ECM, which is this wire here. And you might get that sucker off with one hand, it's kind of difficult, but anyway, that comes off. And, uh, power is disconnected to the ECM. This way I don't have to go back in and change all my radio settings and stuff like that. Uh, if you want to play it safe, just disconnect the battery. And on a 90 uh, Corvette and 91 and some of the other Corvettes, 90 was the first year they started putting the ECM in the engine bay. There were three 10 millimeter nuts, one here, one there. These two you only have to loosen and there's one under here, which I just leave off, you have to remove completely. And then you just flip this over, and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, once you get it out and flipped over, you remove the four screws that hold the cover on. This is, like I said, a 90 quarter vet. Other bottles will vary. Then, let's see, I'll give it a shot. You can remove this, just like removing a memory card. If you ever remove the memory card in a computer, you just pop these two out like that, and the adapter will pop out. This is a memory adapter. You will need the appropriate memory adapter for your car. Now, see if I get this better organized. And in the case of mine, some of these you can get with a zip adapter, which is just a little lever that you turn and it pops right out. I don't have that, so I'm going to pop this chip out. And then I'm going to install basically this ribbon cable, just like so. And uh, in the same place of where, in the place of where that uh, chip goes, pop that out, pop that one in, and then install it back in the car. Okay, I got the chip out, and you see those little pins on there. Those you got to, whenever you install them, in and out of that adapter, you want to make sure they are perfectly straight perfect in every way because otherwise they will go in they bend super easy so you might have to play around with them get them lined up correctly I have the adapter in the car I got the power hooked back up to the ECM and I'll go ahead and hook up my uh, little netbook here and uh, we'll start the car and get everything going okay this is take two uh, this will be the second time I'm recording inside the car running, and the reason is I forgot to turn the camera on. But anyway, we're out in the car. We're going to do this again. I uh, got the uh, my little notebook here hooked up to the uh, 
emulator. I'm going to make sure it's there. I uh, already have my bin file loaded up and everything ready to go. Got to make sure that uh, I am emulating. You'll see emulating down there in that corner. And we'll start her up and see what happens. Okay, we are up and running. And I'll let it warm up here. And there she goes. I already have this, uh, because this is a second take, I already kind of did the, uh, I already have the, uh, biometric fishing stability already logged, uh, close into where it should be. So to give you a quick example, I'm just going to, uh, let me see, engine speed versus idle, versus temperature, I'm sorry. We'll go ahead and, hope you guys can see this. And uh, what I'll do is, you now uh, the tack on my 90 isn't the greatest, it doesn't work very accurately, and I don't have my data logger hooked up. But what I'm going to do is, just to give an example, we'll increase the RPM a whole bunch. Right now I have it set for 725 at that temperature. And we'll increase it. Hmm. We'll just keep increasing it until I get to Should have done this a little different, but there we are In fact, let me do this better Change that to 25 and Change it to 1025 I'm going to upload it to the emulator and hopefully you can hear the engine idle increase. And see the tack go up a little bit. And I see I'm a little lean there too also. So let me lower this a whole bunch. In fact, I'm going to go to 625. See the tack come down. Keep in mind that tack is not accurate. That's way off. Uh, and you can see the AFR. We'll play with that. We'll go to the volumetrically efficient table. And we'll see if we can richen that up a bit. Okay, let's see. Change this to. Oh, and uh, we'll richen up the whole table instead of playing uh, playing with that. So let's see, let's richen up the whole table. That should do it, I think. And there we go. And we're dropping right down there. I don't know, hopefully you guys can read that. Uh, so let's lean it out. I'm gonna put a negative inside in front of that. See on the AFR gauge, I hope, that it is leaning out. It needs to be leaned out a little bit more, obviously. Let's do it. There we go. Leaning out some more. I'll probably lean way out too much now, but this is just an example. Remember, none of these changes you make uh, here won't take effect until you commit changes and upload that little blue button right there. So just keep that in mind. And uh, I'm going to richen that up just a little bit. And 
in here, it's leaning out, and hopefully I'll richen it up. To make changes, you gotta sometimes gotta allow for this sucker to update. Right now, it seems like it's all over the place. Probably because this is just the basic tune, and I didn't make any changes to it. But for uh, that and. Uh, Richen it up some more. And we'll come back here and see if it takes effect. Give it a few minutes here. And richen it up just a little bit. I'm going to keep it. This time I'm going to do it right in that range. I can get my, uh, I can get this keyboard to work right. And then we'll richen it up. And see if that has a better effect on it. And anyway, this gives you a basic idea. I'd probably let it sit there and idle for a little bit more. It'll probably richen up a little bit more since I made the changes. Let's see. Richened it up a little bit more. We're down in the 14s, barely. Always make small changes anyway. I'm going to richen it up a little more every time you hear that beep there. And there we go. Now it's starting to richen up. And I'm going to leave it right there. And uh, like I said, I hope that you were able to read that AFR gauge. Anyway, this gives you a basic idea. Every application is going to be different. Every tune is going to be different. So, uh, hope this gives you an idea uh, what an emulator is and what it does when it comes to tuning a uh, OBD1 car. Uh, I will leave links during the course of this video up there if you haven't seen them. Just go back through the video, you should see them. And I want to thank everyone for watching. Remember to go down below and subscribe. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the notification bell. Leave comments. I like having succeeding comments on there. And everybody have a good day and God bless.